Welcome to Experience Michiana. I'm the show's producer, Kelsey Zumber, and we have a great show for you today, and we're going to jump right into it. We're going to find out about a partnership between Elkhart Civic and Hello Gorgeous. We're going to meet some of the ladies who are going to be calendar girls and also hear about a performance of Calendar Girls at Wellfield Gardens, part of that partnership. We're also gonna find out about a partnership with South Bend Civic Theater and Mix 106 It's part of a Heal and Seal event, really cool music that will bring people together and heal and seal our community. But first, we're gonna head up to uh, Round Barn Winery and hear about all their properties, how they're opening back up, and some of the new things that are experiencing there, including a really unique trail. It is a beautiful summer day, and one of the best places to hang out in the summer is right here at the Round Barn, and I'm with Matt Morse, and Matt, uh, you're the CEO here, as well as mm -hmm. a part of the, uh, the properties that you guys have, um, and you guys are starting to open back up again. Uh, so beyond Round Barn, what are the properties that are a part of the group? So we also have uh, Tabor Hill Winery and Restaurant, Free Run Cellars, um, our Round Barn Brewery and Public House in Baroda, um, the Coloma Filling Station, and then we have two other locations, a uh, Tabor Hill location in Bridgman on 94, and then our Union Pier location that actually carries all three brands. Now, when uh, we first got to know your family, and mm -hmm. there's a long tradition, family tradition here, uh, I think it was just maybe one or two properties that you guys had. And over the last uh, 10, 8, 10 years, you guys have really expanded and doing a great job at each location. So what is, what is it like getting opened back up? It's been stressful. I mean, not having a lot of guidance throughout the process has been painful so um, not knowing when we could open obviously that was you know nobody knew that really right. but as far as what what to expect it would have been nice to have a little more communication from the the state and and the federal government with you know no guidelines in place we were kind of spinning our wheels trying to reinvent who we're going to be without any sort of direction and we had some direction but not really yeah. um, with a short time period so you know we've done a great job with our staff getting ready you know making sure we have the ppe for our staff making sure our guests feel safe and clean and yeah. you know we just couldn't wait to have them back you know being shut down for 80 some days and the start of season's really been a wasn't great for business but right. we're just so happy to be open again one of the great things is most of your properties, if not all of them, have outdoor spaces. Yeah. Uh, especially here. Uh -huh. uh, Tabor Hill's the same way. Uh, Free Run has uh, something out back yeah. as well. So a lot of your properties have this space that makes it a little bit more conducive to, to being socially distant, right? Yeah, we're the social distance kings out here, mm -hmm. I feel like. So we have 200 acres of land here at the Round Barn between that and the Tabor Hill Estate. Um, Free Run Cellars is on 10 acres and a nice outdoor setting there as well. Our public house has a patio. It's, it's indoor outdoor so the windows actually open up like it's an outdoor patio our filling station has outdoor seating so you know it's one thing that um we knew right away is when we could open we have the space so yeah. um we were really looking forward to just getting you know we felt like we're basically a golf course also but it took a little longer to get going so yeah. we're just happy to be back so now one of the things that you guys are really known for is all the different events that yeah. are going on uh, every week, every weekend. Uh, so what does that look like now? What are your plans over the next month or so? Well, we're still planning to do events coming up. We're, you know, kind of easing back into it. We're going to do some of our, um, you know, our harvest party and whatnot, but it's going to be a pared down version of it and until um, the governor opens us up more and we can ensure our guest safety. Um, so we will still be doing some of the events like wine and wags, our sangria party, all those got canceled you know and it's unfortunate but you know again we don't want to go backwards two steps we want to go forward and so um, by limiting guest counts and things and and still doing some events um, we're still gonna have music every weekend out here at the estate so that's something to look forward to but you know um, we can't be shut down again so for us it's we're taking it very seriously and uh, can't wait to have it back to where it used to be and hopefully we can get there soon very good so uh, as far as if people want to know what's going on uh, where's the best place for them to find that is it your website Website, Facebook page? Yeah, kind of that? both. Um, Facebook's obviously going to be much more uh, interactive and, and uh, right now, if you will, and our website, you know, follows that up or has the information as well. But uh, I would say Facebook is your best bet right now or Instagram too. We, we, we post daily on, on all platforms. So our website's up to date and, you know, um, yeah, that's 
Very cool. Now, if you want to connect with them, we'll also have that information on our website. Uh, one of the things that we talked about just a little bit ago is that something was kind of born out of mm -hmm. this COVID stuff, and that's uh, new trails. Yeah. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit about so that? So when we acquired Tabor Hill in 2017, um, it came with, you know, 100 acres of land and, and a lot of wooded land. And we wanted to, when we bought it, make trails um, for people to enjoy cross-country skiing and hiking and you know just more outdoorsy um, we we didn't really get to it in the last couple of years and it was always part of our business plan because when my dad was a manager at Tabor Hill in the 80s they had some paths and had been doing something so we wanted to bring it back and with with COVID it actually gave us the uh, you know 80 days to like now what are we going to do so oh, right. you know I got in the machine and hired somebody to help me and you know we groomed up some trails and worked with a, a buddy out of Love Creek to get some ideas so um, those are going to open uh, well they will have opened by the time this has aired so yeah. um, Father's Day weekend they've opened and people will be able to take any of our products out into the trails enjoy themselves on uh, almost four miles of walking paths. So there's some harder trails that are pretty hilly and then there's some pr nice easy stuff that goes through the vineyard. So it gives people a chance to either walk the vineyards or through the woods and, and enjoy both Round Barn and Tabor Hill at the same time. So um, guests can uh, enter the trail system at a trailhead at either property, Round Barn or Tabor Hill. And um, there's also food available that you could take your own picnic if you want to. Uh, in addition to that, we're sitting in one of our new suites that yeah. we've been looking to do for years and finally had the time to build those as well. So we built four new suites outside, so our elevated tasting is now an outdoor version of it. Mm -hmm. And we're looking to maybe add a couple more of those where people can maybe rent it for the day, have a guaranteed seat, have the shade, uh, and enjoy the music with uh, their own private service. Now, as far as the trails go, you talked about there being kind of different levels of difficulty are those marked out on the trail yep they're mar uh it's actually marked on the map more okay. the trail itself sure. has wayfinder signs um it doesn't really go by difficulty yet we're yeah. you know phase one here but the map that we we have uh, put together does have the difficulty and kind of uh, different routes that you can take as well and uh, I heard uh, as I was getting ready here, uh, some of the woodpeckers and nature and yeah. stuff that's, that's out there. So it's really a great opportunity to not only see the estate in the, the property that you mm -hmm. have, but get kind of into the nature at the same yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. And we're gonna work with some naturalists too to develop some birding and uh, different nature walks and tree identification and uh, native plant species and whatnot. So there's more to come. It's just the start of uh, kind of expanding further. What we do is diversity and offering guests a unique experience with uh, the Morsh Hospital family. As far as the trail system, Matt, uh, I know there's a couple of different ways that people can have access to that. There's a daily uh, fee or there's an mm -hmm. annual fee? Yeah, so we do have a $5 day pass that also gets you into the Round Barn Estate. Um, on, the sa on Saturdays and Sundays we charge at the estate, but during the week um, it's $5 to hit the trails. You can do a $15 season pass that's good at the estate at Round Barn 2 for all the music um, throughout the summer. Um, with COVID, there is one other thing I did want to mention too that uh, we are more limited in seating capacity, so it's not thousands of people anymore. It's right. the you know 50% occupancy, and we're actually doing table service. So you, you don't even get up to, except to use the bathroom, everything's brought to you now. So you're waited on uh, at the tables, and food and drink is brought to you now. Okay, very good. And uh, just like the other things here, um, people shouldn't be bringing in their own alcohol and stuff for the trail. Yeah, exactly. And the trail's only open when you're open, right? Yep. So the trails are open during normal business hours. Um, and that's just to protect guests, and uh, so we can do any updates out there as well but uh, yeah we can't wait for people to come out and enjoy I mean it's a there's no uh, national park or nature park around here that allows alcohol so that'll be pretty cool that's so good and you guys do such a tremendous job and so I guess the big question this remaining is how is the season going as far as the grapes grapes are looking great yeah. you know it's the first uh, two last two years have been pretty tough last year um, we basically had no crop yeah. And this year that it's bounced right back and we're going to have a bountiful uh, vintage here hopefully if we I won't say that until it's in the bottle but so far so good there's a lot of grapes out there and we're going to have some really nice wine and, and uh, the weather so far has been perfect so look for a really fantastic 2020 vintage if any sort of silver lining it's we should have some great wine and some new uh, things to offer. That's great and it looks beautiful out here as always uh, I look forward to seeing other people out and yeah. experiencing some of the new things so Matt so thank you so much. Yeah. You your family for Thank offering you for all this stuff. Having us on. Yeah, so make sure you get out and experience the Round Barn and all the family of properties. And remember, if you want to find out more about what's going on, check out the Facebook page, the website, or any of their other social media platforms.
So the trail that they have opened up on Father's Day, so you can get up and experience it now. You can take some of your wine or whatever beverage with you and walk around, see the nature, and enjoy the properties up there between Round Barn and Tabor Hill. Uh, looking forward to experiencing that again. Now we're going to find out about a partnership between Elkhart Civic and Hello Gorgeous, uh, which includes some calendar girls. You'll see what I mean. So today I'm in beautiful downtown Elkhart on a really warm day and we are out here to celebrate life in a kind of a different and creative way. And it's through a partnership with Elkhart Civic Theater and Hello Gorgeous. And here to talk to me about that is Dave DeFour and Susan Smith. Thank you so much for being out here on this beautiful day. Well, thanks for the opportunity. Now, today is actually photo shoot day, right? right? Um, right. And so tell me a little bit about what's happening today. Well, today uh, we are taking photographs of five of what they call gorgeous women from Hello Gorgeous. These are women who have undergone one of the makeovers uh, in, in re recent past, and uh, they're being photographed uh, to be part of a calendar that will be handed out at the event. So, and the event's called Calendar Girls, and so those are going to be five of our Calendar Girls. And Very so that's good. what the photo session today is, and we've had other photo sessions as well. Right, and so this will be put together a calendar that is going to be handed out at an event in August, on right. August 4th, right? Right. And Susan, you're a part of the cast for that. Yes. And that's a, a, a show called Calendar Girls. Yes, it is. So it kind of really is very fitting. So tell me a little bit about that show. Well, the show, which Dave here probably can tell as well, um, is about a group of women, British women, and they need to raise some money and they decide to do a calendar. Not their usual broccoli and carrots and garden club type pictures. They decide to do a calendar of themselves um, in various poses doing things they like to do. That's sure. right, and and not always fully dressed, but it's it's all done it's all done very in a very chaste and to some degree humorous manner. So, Dave, tell me about how this presentation is going to happen because it's going to be at Wellfield it's as opposed the, to Bristol. It'll be at the Wellfield Gardens outside, and it's going to be basically a kind of a gala event with tables and there'll be you know heavy hors d'oeuvres and all that kind of thing. August fourth, from uh, six to nine p.m. at the at the gardens, and it's going to be what we call a staged reading, which is kind of uh, it's sort of uh, halfway to a fully staged production, but it's re it's a play read by the actors with gusto and with a certain amount of staging and. And I know it's going to be good because my daughter is directing it. Yes. Very, very good, very good. <laughs> now, Susan, one of the reasons that it's such a joy to talk to you is because not only are you an actor, but you have also had the opportunity to, to receive yes. some things from Hello Gorgeous, right? Yes, I was given a makeover, a surprise makeover. One I didn't even know that I needed, and it emotionally brought such support to me. So I'm a big fan of Hello Gorgeous. So yes. we talked about just a little bit ago that your prognosis, if it's okay, yes. uh, was six months. It was six months. 12 years ago. Yes. Uh, so what did it mean to you um, what Hello Gorgeous did for you that day? Well, besides feeling spe special, um, when you're going through cancer, you don't feel good about yourself. And a lot of times you look sickly and you feel sickly and you don't have hair. And when the hair grows back in, it doesn't look normal. And they just help you to feel good about yourself, both the makeup tips and, and uh, I mean, makeup and hairdo and clothes. It was all given to me. And it was a total surprise. and. Um, and, I, and it's stuck with me for many, many days, well, years as well. Yeah. yeah well, Hello Gorgeous, uh, I, I don't know, it's sort of their tagline, part of their mission, and they say that uh, they, they, they help restore what cancer steals, the beauty that cancer steals. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it, it, you know, so it's both, it's both physical and an emotional lift for these women. Yeah, it's very good. And then you've told me, I think, that there are multiple actors uh, yeah. that have had this experience that part of Elkhart Civic. Well, the, in addition to Susan, we've had, yes, one of the other actresses has had had, uh, has had uh, uh, an, an ex I don't know what you call it, an experience with cancer, gone right. through cancer. Um, my daughter and I, well, I lost my wife a few years ago. So it's, you know, we're all aware, you know, I think that cancer is one of those things that touches almost exactly. everybody. Exactly. You, you know, and I, I, uh, I think that it's the nastiest 
disease yeah. that comes along, and, and I think that anything we can do to, to help support that mission uh, is, uh, is really important. I agree with that sentiment. Um, mm -hmm. And right now we are out in front of Stevenson's in right. downtown Elkhart, and I bring that up because it really takes partnerships to make things like this right. happen, yes. uh, whether it's Hello Gorgeous and all of the wonderful things that they do, or this event, the, the calendar right. shoot. So tell me some of the, the people and the organizations that are helping make this possible. Well, right now we, we've uh, gotten some support from the uh, Community Foundation. Uh, and uh, also um, uh, Indiana Trust, uh, as well as some individual donors who, who are kind of staying a little bit anonymous. Sure. And Stevens's has been uh, uh, really helpful because they're, uh, they, they've, they've helped us with some of the marketing of the event, as well as the fact that they're, they're essentially uh, providing the wardrobe for the photo shoots for the Hello Gorgeous Women. That's great. Now, uh, we're looking forward to this, and, and what, is, what are you looking forward to most about this day in August? Well, I think the play is going to be extremely fun. I'm looking forward to that. I'm just looking forward to getting more people knowing about the Hello Gorgeous, but also the great things that Elkhart Civic Theater does. I'm a proponent of both organizations very much so. So Dave, how do people find out how to be a part of it? Well, they can find information on our website, which is ElkhartCivicTheater.org. Uh, if they're interested in tickets, there's, uh, they need to go to something called GiveGrove.com uh, forward slash calendar girls. They'll find, they'll find information there. And so, yeah, there's, there's plenty of links around and uh, you should be able to find it. Yeah, our Facebook page will have info as well. Very good. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing your story, for, for being here. Um, we really look forward to it. It should be a beautiful day. Wellfield is a, just a tremendous oh, place. Yes. Right. Uh, glad it's there. And it, remember, if you guys want more information, uh, we will connect you to them through our website, experiencemichiana.org. So you can find out more information about that event on our website, and we'll link you over to there so you can get tickets to it if you want to attend there at Wellfield. And now we're going to find out about another partnership between South Bend Civic Theater and Mix 106, and it's Heal and Seal, brought to you by music. So you and I are probably all in the same boat uh, as far as what's going on these days. We're trying to find a way to make our community stronger by figuring out how to relate to each other better and to open our arms to one another. And South Bend Civic has been doing that in a number of ways over the years. And so Aaron uh, is, Nichols is joining us right now. And Aaron, thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's always a pleasure, Kelsey. Thanks for having me. Now, Aaron, you guys are partner partnering with a new event uh, that's happening this Saturday called Heal and Seal. Is that correct? That is correct. We are honored to be able to host this event. Uh, we are hosting it, but it's being kind of organized by another, and I think we have her with us as well. That's right. And Sunita Davis is joining us, and you are with Mix 106. And Sunita, I hear this was your idea. Yes, it was and is and very, very excited about it. And thanks for having me on. Very excited about this event. Okay, so from what I understand, this is going to be kind of healing the community through music and sealing with unity. That's the kind of the tagline I've I've heard. So what does that mean exactly? That means that we're going to come together and we're going to heal through music. We know music does a lot to soothe the soul and soothe the pain. And there is a lot of unjust and unrest and not only in our, our own community today, but also around the world. And it's very important that we come together and soothe and heal. And what better way through music? And then when we come together to unite, when you're united, you know, united for us, it can't fall. So united, we stand together. That's true. That's so true. So uh, as far as music, how, what kind of music are we going to hear? How are we going to hear it? We're, that kind of thing. It's going to be amazing. Um, it's going to be a virtual event. We decided that was going to be the safest for the community in, low, in lieu of the COVID and everything going on. People can watch it in the comfort of their own homes, have some watch parties and get it together. We have so many, a, a whole line of gospel music. I get so excited talking about it um, from some local gospel groups uh, that all are fam familiar with, from the Davis Trio um, to some local choirs, uh, some gospel choirs, Sweet Home Ministries, Mount Carmel, to name a few. We have some saxophonists going on, um, Steve Marble. We have some some soloists. It's going to be some mind praise dance. It's going to be a mixture of all type of things to keep you um, involved and keep you intrigued and keep you inspired at the that same time. So, that is so cool. And like you said, music really does kind of bring us together. And so what is your hope for this virtual event? 
our hope for this virtual event is that we can continue to stand together. We can be un united and we can understand that we can't overcome everything in one day, but the more we come together and, if, and coming together through music, music has been around for so long, um, at least the last 60, 70 years going back to slavery and different things. And music has got a lot of people through a lot of things. And so we're hoping through the different types of music, um, the versatility of it, that people will be able to be united, will engage in it, enjoy it, and really get some soothing and some healing from it. So uh, what was the response that you got from a lot of the artists and groups as you tried to put this together when you, when you had this idea? What was the response that you got? Very phenomenal. Um, very involved in the gospel community. So I thought it was going to be a lot easier, meaning like everybody was excited. And everybody still is excited. You know, with COVID, a lot of people haven't been practicing or haven't been meeting. So um, a lot of people wanted to be more involved than they were able to because of the notice. Um, and again, the urgency and thanks so much for, for Aaron um, and his staff for just coming right on. Aaron was just excited as I. It was, um, the urgency of it was right now. So this event, I want to add, has been planned with literally within two weeks. So to get people involved and for people to say, yes, I am, and we're going to have an emergency meeting to get the choir together and to come and meet in a short period of time, but knowing the urgency of it, just phenomenal. Well, thank you so much for putting in all the work as far as oh, you no know, bringing the, the people together. Uh, what is the best way for people to, since it's a virtual event, to participate? Yes, uh, people can go on to our website, mix106online.com, and they can go onto our Facebook page and they can stream it there. It's going to be on Facebook Live. You'll also be able to see it. The South Bend Civic Theater uh, will be there. And again, the purpose of having people watch it from the comfort of their own homes is to have it safe for everyone. So the performers will be there. We'll be also practicing our social distancing, et cetera, and everything to keep it safe for everyone, but to make sure everybody tunes in. So whether you watch it individually on your phone, have a watch party with everyone, we want we want this to go viral. So we want everybody to tune in and, and be healed and sealed by this event. That's great. And Sunita, you chose to partner uh, with South Bend Civic. And my guess is it's because of all of the things that they've already been doing up to this point. What, what does it mean to you to partner with South Bend Civic? I mean, amazing. I don't want to, you know, how you say you don't want to get teary-eyed. Aaron has been phenomenal. We met a couple years ago, and it's always that first impression when you meet somebody and when you know somebody has a passion for the community and for what they do. And so I wanted to reach out, and again, it was literally two weeks ago, and I'm like, where can we pull this off in, in two weeks right now? And when I called Aaron, of course, he has his cell phone number on his website. Who, Of course he would, right? <laughs> I reached out to him, and in lieu of everything going on, I mean, it literally was like, he was like, yes, it was like one day. And so when I went down, I had a, I'm a big visionary, but again, since we we had small time I tried to make it a little smaller and when I went Aaron was like no we're going big <laughs> and so for them to to get in how they have and the, the staff and to welcome us and to let us you know go around and use the whole facility for different things it has been truly a blessing and phenomenal and Mix 106 is excited about this partnership and many 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 more to come. That sounds great. And it does sound like the Aaron I know. So Aaron, yes. <laughs> um, as far as this partnership goes, they're going to be there performing. Walk us through, how, how does that work? So our building is is configured in a way that you really can have a have one path for one theater, one path for another theater. You know, we have an outdoor space now. We have our lobby. So all of those spaces are going to be being used. And we have this really interesting kind of uh, walk with me, talk with me kind of tour guide that's going to be happening. I think that might be Sunita. Uh, but I think that that whole, uh, that whole event, I think we'll have that kind of uh, uh, immediacy and will have that kind of constant uh, stream of content. So it won't be anything where you're like, okay, let me just turn off, look at my phone for five minutes and then go back to it. It should be like for the entire event, just a constant stream of beautiful music and, and, and healing uh, opportunity. So that, that's why I thought, you know, going big was the best because I know with these kind of virtual events, you got to keep people's attention. And I know with all of the stuff that Sunita's put together, we are going to keep people's attention. And I think it's going to be a remarkable event. I agree, and it sounds great. So, Aaron, this kind of falls in line mission-wise with your uh, idea task force. And for those who haven't heard of that for South Bend Civic, uh, let us know what that is. Sure. Well, IDEA is kind of the latest incarnation of the work that's been going on uh, regarding diversity. And so IDEA stands for Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Access. So as this has kind of been involving, we realize that the word diversity does not even is not even close to handling the entire 
uh, 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 spectrum of things that need to be worked on. So that's why equity got added, then inclusion, and then access. All of that speaks to different parts of this work. And so that's kind of where this idea task force has come in. We have a board member, Bianca Tirado, who is an amazing force for good. And she and I have been working on, okay, what does this task force do? What is its mission? How is it uh, contributing to the civic mission? Uh, and, and I think that that work has led to a lot of the partnerships that we've been getting involved in, has led to some of the, uh, the content we've been putting out, whether it be you know, between Riverside and Crazy and Grand Concourse a couple of years ago, or Gem of the Ocean that was just this year, that August Wilson series is a 10-year commitment. That comes out of the work of groups like the Idea Task Force here at the Civic. You know, we're gonna be creating something around Better Homes of South Bend, which is a phenomenal story of success. Uh, a, a against redlining and against some of the systemic racism here in our own city. So I think that that play in development is gonna be another huge initiative that the Civic is committing to. And so we are just looking for any way to celebrate and amplify uh, the stories of our artists of color, of our, of our citizens of color, and just doing our best to be that safe space, to be that place where we are truly telling all stories, not just not just the ones that have been overrepresented, but the ones that are underrepresented. That's great, and thank thank you so much for that work that you guys are doing. And uh, I just revisit this heal and seal, uh, which is taking place this Saturday, um, June twenty seventh, and it starts at five p.m. and and Sunita. Uh, Thank you too for the work that you're put you put in to make this happen. Uh, what are you most looking forward to this Saturday? I am most looking for this event going viral. Did I say that going viral? And for people to really feel that they have come together and they have really been healed and to seal it, knowing that you know when I think of um, unity and when I think of people, you know I think of colors and I think of last not colors, but candy. You know, you have all different kinds. You have your caramel, you have your chocolate, your dark chocolate, you know, you have your mocha, your white chocolate, you know, but they're all good. And we all come together um, for the benefit of good. And that's what I wanted to get out this Saturday was something that needed to be done we, it's an urgency that needs to be done right now. And, and what better way to bring people together through music and to heal them that way, to heal and soothe all that pain, have them get up, get your tambourines ready, get your voices ready, uh, or, or your or your pans, whatever it is that you do, and, and get involved with us. And as Aaron said, it's an event that we want to keep you intrigued the whole time. And we want you really to seal it with unity, going off knowing that because one person may offend you, don't take that against that whole race as a whole or as a, you know, keep it as an individual and work on that. I always feel that one person can make a difference. It starts with one person. And if each person gets in and, and gets some change involved, we can have a better community and, of course, a better world. Well, that's it for today's show. We brought to you a couple of really cool events and some activities. Hopefully you can get out and experience that. Remember, if you are out experiencing Michiana, post about it on Facebook and include the hashtag Experience Michiana so we can find out about it and share it with our viewers, too. Next week on the show, we have some really cool stuff, including throwing some axes. Yes, throwing axes with Rick. Oh, I'm scared already. Anyway, that's going to be on next week's show. Hope you join us. Have a great week. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.